In this video, we'll calculate using the concepts of thermal expansion and determine the, uh, the temperature when a certain uh, differential expansion has occurred. This, uh, you might encounter this as a bimetallic strip where aluminum and black brass, in this case, the strips are flat and the flat sides are welded together so they maintain contact. Um, this compound strip is, for our problem, is straight when the temperature is 20 degrees Celsius. We want to determine the temperature when the aluminum side is 0.3% longer than the brass side. And how can this occur? Well, the material is going to curve. This bimetallic strip will curve. Which side is on the outside of the curve? Well, that would be the side that expands the most, and it turns out it's the aluminum portion, and that's been uh, identified here. The aluminum portion is 0.3% longer. There's a reason that it's the aluminum portion. Uh, so let's uh, go through the work here. And again, as uh, I put things on here, feel free to pause the video if I'm going too fast. But our problem defines that we want the length of the aluminum side compared to the length of the brass side to be in a ratio of 1.003. This is saying the length of the aluminum is 3%, 0.003, larger than the length of the brass strip. The way that we calculate length is due to thermal expansion. We take the original length and then we use the expansion coefficient alpha, linear expansion coefficient alpha, times the original length, times their change in temperature from 20 degrees Celsius. As you look up uh, tables of these coefficients, the alphas, uh, very often they're uh, set up for 20 degrees Celsius as the starting temperature uh, for the calculation. So we want this to be the case. Here's the new length expression for the aluminum. The new length is the original length plus this term that represents the change in the length. So the original aluminum length, we have uh, alpha for the aluminum, the original length of the aluminum, and T minus 20. And then over here, 1.003 times the new length for the brass. Both the brass and the aluminum are going to be increasing in length. Um, so let's go a little bit further here, putting in our numbers. So one here, the coefficient of expansion for aluminum, then T minus 20. And uh, what do you notice is not in this line? L naught has been canceled. So there's an L naught in every term, here, here, and then here and here. So I can divide through by L naught. We don't need to know what the uh, original length was. We just want a percent change, 0.3% longer. So Following along here, here's the alpha for the brass material, 18 times 10 to the minus 6. The aluminum expands more. Its alpha number is bigger, so its change in length is larger. Both strips have the same change in temperature. They're welded together. They're in thermal contact. So they, start, they both start at 20 degrees Celsius. They both end at this final unknown temperature, T. They are in thermal contact. The aluminum brass have the same change in temperature. Why don't I cancel that? Well, there's a one here that has no change in temperature in it, and likewise over here. So they can't be canceled. Don't cancel them. That's our unknown. We need it. So let's go a little further here. If I distribute through the parentheses, 22 times 10 to the minus 6 times t, the 22 times 10 to the minus 6 times minus 20 gives us a term minus 4.4 times 10 to the minus 4. Distribute through the 1.003, and again, distributing 1.03, the 18 times 10 to the minus 6, and the t. And then, of course, I have another term for this minus uh, 20 multiplied by the 18 times 9 to the minus 6 times 1.0003. So you should pause and look over this work. Uh, sometimes I make mistakes. If I've made a mistake, put it in the comment. Um, now, <clears throat> Gathering together our, our like terms. Um, I'm keeping the t's over on the left side here. And in doing this, 
uh, you have to pay attention that the power of 10 is, is changing here. And we have 2.2 .2 times 10 to the minus 5, and we have 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. This term's going to be subtracted. The 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5 subtracted from the 2.2. .2. So 2.2 .2 minus 1.8, that would be about 0.4 but I'm shifting powers of 10 to 10 to the minus 6. So 3.946, 10 to the minus 6 t. And then the numbers on the right side, I started with 1.003. I subtracted 1 from both sides. And then I subtract the 3.6108 times 10 to the minus 4. And hopefully I've, I've done that correctly to end up with uh, 3.07892 uh, times 10 to the minus 6. In working problems, I tend not to round uh, in intermediate calculations. I'll round at the final answer. And we're ready to calculate that final answer. Divide through by the coefficient that's on t. And again, you should check my work here. I've got uh, 780 degrees Celsius. And I did not look up the melting point of aluminum and brass, but I think it's higher than that. Um, perhaps I'll do that later and uh, change this problem if that turns out to be higher than the melting point of aluminum or brass. But 780 degrees Celsius. Now you might want to check your work. So what I did was I calculated what is the new length of the aluminum, assuming we start with one meter. Could start with anything, but I'm going to start with one meter. That's the easiest calculation. And I find that the aluminum now has a length 1.01672 at this 780 degrees Celsius uh, value and calculate the length of the brass. And we have a number here. One thing to note is the aluminum is larger than the brass, so we're on the right track. We wanted the aluminum side to be larger. And then what about the percent change? So I subtract the uh, brass number from the aluminum. I divide by the aluminum. And I come up with 3 times 10 to the minus 3. That is 0.3% larger. The aluminum side is 0.3% larger at 780 degrees Celsius. So the check uh, works out. And we've used the concept of uh, linear expansion to find the new length. We set up that the length of the aluminum, the new length of the aluminum, is 1.003 multiplied by the new length of the brass, and then algebra from, uh, from that point on. So there are other physics videos that you might want to explore, and they're listed and described at physics.gpclements.com. Astronomy content for, for courses, astronomy.gpclements.com, and also general astronomy information, uh, such as there's a calendar for the events that are happening in the sky for the current year. Both of these sites, there's no registration, totally free. Uh, hope you have fun and hope you uh, ask your instructor questions when they occur.